Cheat you're a fly fish food and we have a really cool one for you. This is for all you metalheads. Listen to Gojira. Turn on flying whales. Listen to it while you watch this fly because it is called the flying whale. Two of my kids are mega metalheads. We listen to this song a lot. Don't judge my parenting. It's awesome. This is a really cool one. The name is because uh, my daughter and I, my daughter Mia and I, listened to the song Flying Whales by Gojira. I mean, it's heavy metal. I mean, if it's going to scare you, don't listen to it, but highly recommend it. Anyway, this fly is called the Flying Whale because we like to listen to it at full volume in our basement. And this fly is a party as well. We're going to do the sexy, sh sexy shad flavoration of this, and it's going to turn out looking like this. Um, no eyes on this bad boy. We're going to put a little bit of detail in, but still keep it pretty simple. Anyway, let's get rolling. I'm just using a thicker thread. This is Semperfly 6 Ot. Um, you can use whatever thread you like. If you want to tie this with pink thread, I really don't care. So yes, you can. All right, so typically on a streamer fly, I'm going to put the lightest color on the bottom. But because we're going to just, the, the, the tail on this has a few different colors in it. I don't want one of the very brightest colors to be on the bottom because they're neon. They're not just white. So I'm going to put gray first, and we're going to, we're going to put three colors on this. So I'm just farming out some gray marabou, about like that. And... This is a really thick bodied fly, um, so it, it's not super necessary to, to watch your tie-ins. Even, even because of that, we'll still tie it in slim, even though we could have got a little slimmer. We're going to put in a few more colors now. So the next color is going to be chartreuse, uh, just a little sliver, about like that much. This is actually fluorescent yellow chartreuse. You can use yellow or green chartreuse. I like to find the yellow if I can. And as you can see, my thread's the green chartreuse. So don't sue me because of that. We are mixing chartreuse colors, but I think the fish will forgive us. All right, and then this really cool, uh, I don't even know what this color's called. It's not kingfisher blue, but it's some sort of blue. Fluorescent blue or sky blue or something. And that's going to be the final color that we throw on there, just like that. And I do like to use a longer tubed bobbin for these articulated streamers. The Loon Ergo Bobbin is my absolute favorite for that. Not even because I have big hands. But it, it's, it's a really good spot for you to grab onto at the longer tube for the long flies. So anyway, kudos to you, Lunars. All right, so now I'm going to add a little bit of flash. And we're going to do this a little differently. A lot of times on buggerish flies, you're going to put some flash and run along both sides. Just a couple of them. We're actually going to add a little bit of wiggle to this fly. So we're going to take some shimmer boo stuff you make Crelex flies out of and this is just like a pearlish color you can use whatever of the flashy flash colors um, and I'm going to tie that in and cut it about an inch longer than the tail that's going to kind of ride out there and give it a little bit of kick in the water all right next step we're going to take some schloppen um, you are going to ask me <clears throat> why I didn't tie this complex twist style. It's because uh, the chenille we're going to use is, is already thick enough. And if we twisted it up, it'd probably get too bulky. Kind of like Brigham when they had to buy him the, the medium pants in high school, baseball instead of the small. Was that what happened, Brig? That time when you are like sliding into third and tore the britches off you? You got bullied for like a year? I don't know. I get Briggs stories mixed up sometimes. <laughs> All right. So tie in the chenille. Now we're going to take this schloppen feather. We're going to tie it in by the tip. Again, don't worry about this big gnarly tie-in point we have for everything. It will be barely noticeable. 
once we get this wrapped. So we're just wrapping everything forward, leave the thread in the front, and we'll start with our chenille. Get all these haters out of here. Go to the back of the fly. <clears throat> and we'll just wrap this forward. And on this one, I like to leave plenty of room on the front of the, the fly because these little, uh, this is called squish chenille. And it, these are little rubber legs. So it's not a normal chenille. I'll show you on the bigger size. So we're going to use this on the front. But each of these white things is a stretchy, stretchy rubber leg. Anyway, all flying whales have rubber legs. That's, that's in the book. Anyway, we'll get rid of these. Sometimes these like to, to hang forward on this squish chenille. So we'll try to clean up the tie-in. And now we're ready to wrap hackle. Yes, it would be more durable in a complex twist, but what happens is when you when you bury this feather stem all the way down in this squish chenille, it's much less likely that a fish is going to catch that and break it. So uh, we're taking our chances here with this one. You can counter wrap with wire or thread or whatever you like. And then once I get to the front of this chenille, I'm just going to do a few turns right on top of each other because I want to just build up a collar on this fly. <clears throat> and pull that back on top of everything. And before I trim that off, really tight wraps here. And now I should be able to take that slop and feather, kind of crease it and then pull it off. There's no no tag end there, it's a super clean tie off. And now we'll just brush this bad boy. Yes, I know what you're thinking. You can fish this just like it stands. So if you fish it just like this, you just call it the whale. The front part is what makes it fly. Okay, the next step here is we're going to just brush that out. It's not as critical on this back fly uh, because the rubber fibers aren't super long. On the front half of the hook, it gets pretty gnarly. So anyway, let's get ready to tie that one. Brigham very kindly and nicely went and found my super glue for me. Um, it seems like every time we film, I'm sending him out there. Maybe I'm doing it on purpose, Brig. All right, so there's the back half of the fly. That was on a 2461 size two. That's a Daiichi. I'm going to put a Gammy um, B10S in the vise now. It, it, it is weighted. Um, you can't see the weight. There's not a cone on it. There's no barbell eyes. But what I'm doing is I'm taking a giant five and a half millimeter bead and I'm going to put that on there. And the reason I took it off, sometimes these B10S's can be tough with slotted beads. I buy the the hairline version, it has a little bit bigger slot on the back, so it fits through there. But you do have to debarb the the hook. So, you know what? I'm going to redo this. All right, barbless gammy in. We're going to lock that bead in place because it's not going to go in front of the fly, as we've already established. So we're just going to start our thread a little bit further back. And we're going to roll that bead so that the slot's on the bottom of it. And I'm just going to trap that where I want it, I don't know, about that far back from the head. So I'll just do some crisscross wraps underneath. And then eventually I'm just going to build up a dam in front and come in the back and build up a dam in the back. And should hold it quite well. I won't super glue right now because we'll do that in just a second because we're going to tie in the articulation wire. Um, I will put a layer of thread down first just to kind of give it a little bit of something to grab onto. It's not as slick as just a bare hook. And I'm going to come up here, leave a little bit hanging over the front, wrap this all the way down. Now, um, if I stopped right there, um, you'd have a lot more chance of fouling this. So on these front hooks, I mean on a wide gap hook, especially like a, a, a Gamakatsu, you can wrap down the bend quite a bit. And th what that does is the exit point of this, um, this wire 
is way further back on the hook and it's not as prone to swing all the way around the hook point and foul. All right, 3D bead time. We're gonna throw on an articulation bead. This is a white one. Um, I like them because they're actually fairly gray. So thread that on one way and then I'm just going to put my fly on and put it back through. So here I have it, I just use the, the wire to adjust how far I want that to hang back. You don't want it so tight that it won't move, but you, you don't want it so loose that it's more prone to foul. So there's kind of a happy medium about right there. So I'll just pinch that, put a few turns of thread in, and then I'll get rid of this excess so I don't have to fight it as I wrap this in. Okay, so wrap down to the starting point of that. And then I'll just wrap that up. I'm just using my finger to kind of push the wire down where I want it. And now I'll take both of those, take my thread back a little bit, catch them and tie them down. If you try to do that with the thread in front, it's it'll slip off a lot like that. So just take it back, catch it back there. Now you can cover up those, those other ends. The other hack to doing this is right where I cut it is going to be very sharp. And you can still go over it with your thread. Just just take all the tension off your thread. Sorry Norvice guys that only have one thread tension setting. Just kidding, that was me, but it's kind of serious. Anyway, but it doesn't really work that way. So you want to be able to take very light wraps and cover those ends up. Okay. So we'll cover it all up. And right here is where we're going to start tying things in. So even though we wrapped it down all the way, we don't have to put materials in back there. <clears throat> so I'm going to take some super glue and just coat that thread. Um, you know, I've been talking a lot with guys about using GSP. They say it's more durable. But on a fly like this, I would say that it even makes it less durable because it's so slick things can pull out a lot easier. So anyway, I like just normal thread for normal streamers. If I'm doing a lot of deer hair, I'll pull out the GSP. Okay, time to build another tail section. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab, and you're going to want to find some bushier pieces. And we're going to tie the tail in about that long. I just got super glue on my fingers. All right. So, little mini tail there. Chartreuse. And, hmm, goodness. I just burped, Brigham. Chartreuse and Bless so you. on. Bless you. Bless me for what? Burping. Oh, thanks, man. All right, so just a little hint of marabou on this. Um, I did one where I, I did the pinch cut, and it kind of looked a little wonky, so I wanted to just leave the tips in, make it look a little bit better that way. Uh, but really, it's just going to swim in the water, so fish might not care as much. Same thing as before, but... This time I'm going to use the large size of squish chenille. And I just peeled off and caught the core a little bit. And this one's really messy. But that's kind of what we want. So chenille and another piece of schlappen. Do people really call it schlappen in certain parts of the country, Brig? All right. Anyway, back to normally <laughs> programmed broadcasting. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the thicker of the chenilles. I mean, if this chenille is a person, it's me. The other one is Brigham. Okay. All right. So I did those pretty mashed together and you saw that I kind of preened the rubber legs back to get them out of the way as I wrap that forward. And don't worry about this. Like this is an OCD tire's worst nightmare because it's going to look bad for a second. So buckle up. All right. So just wrap the hackle through there. 
um, wiggle it around. You're going to trap fibers down, um, but we're going to get them back out. Just wrap all the way up to the bead. A few turns right in front. See if I can get all the rubber legs behind there. I think we did it. All right, now I'm going to put some really tight thread wraps right here because I'm going to come in here and brush this bad boy. And when I say brush, use a plastic comb. I have the metal CNF comb and it's almost too grabby. So the rubber legs get caught up in it and you end up yanking them out of here. This little plastic comb, so delicate, Brigham could even uh, brush his mustache with it, which is pretty much peach fuzz. I shaved it off. All right, fly's done, almost to that point. All right, so I'm gonna take some EP craft fur brushes. These are like the most immaculate craft fur brushes ever. I'm pretty good at building brushes. There's six of these in a package and I can get three flies per brush, maybe four uh, for like 15 bucks a package. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, if you like to build your own stuff, by, by all means, figure out how to make them look like this. Not going to happen. All right. So, tie in the wire and either get some good wire cutters for the end of it. I like these electrical flush cutters. Or Curtis's scissors are all out of here, but if you have a buddy tying next to you, just grab their scissors when they're not looking, they'll never know. Then they have to come to fly fish food and buy new scissors when you ruin them. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this kind of like a soft tackle where I'm gonna fold the fibers over every wrap. And we're just gonna do that all the way forward and you will catch some, it's fine. You don't have to get it all perfect because we're gonna fix it later. And the bead actually kind of props things up as well. So this head has a nice kind of conical shape um, in the water. It's, it's not going to just suck all down because craft fur moves, but it actually keeps shape really well if it's tied like this. All right. So once I get to the point where I'm tying it off, instead of just wrapping my thread and catching a bunch of fibers, I'm going to brush this out one way and I'm going to brush the head the other way. Once I have it parted out like that, I'm just going to bring my thread over the top and just catch it like twice and then to secure everything. You see me do this a lot where I just pull everything back and build up some thread right in front and that just pushes those wraps so much tighter than they were. Um, so once I, I'm ready to cut, there's just a little tiny part right there sticking up. Cut it off and we're all set. Okay, we'll whip finish this and then we get to the art part of this fly. This is my favorite part. I mean, I'm using the Smeyan scissors, the small ones. Very, very nice sharp points on these. I've liked them a lot so far. All right, and I'm just going to take my super glue or whatever head cement you like and get that dialed. Okay, now comes the cool part. We're going to give it a, a brush out. Just get all those fibers playing nicely. And now we, we're going to add some detail to this. So one of the things about putting eyes on streamers is if you glue them in, you're going to smash the head all flat. And so we're just going to pretend like we don't need eyes on this. We're just going to build this with no eyes. We're going to put all the other detail in it. If you want to put some eyes on these, go right ahead. But I wanted more of the, like the round profile in the front to push a little more water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a gray Prismacolor and I'm just going to pull the fibers and I stretch them upward. If I just color back, there's a bead right here and there will be a really dark spot where the marker hits the bead. So I'm going to pull it up and just tease that into it like there. And like I do always when I tie, I have one hand that I use for dark colors on the marker. So I'm just going to push 
my right hand, I guess, was designated to blend the, the dark colors. The reason I do that is because if you take these markered fingers now and do it on the bottom with your yellow or whatever color, it's going to just get it all dark. And it looks like I didn't follow my rules. I got dark colors on both hands. <clears throat> anyway. Next step is I'm going to grab a sepia marker, and this is just kind of like a tannish brownish. And I'm going to put that right on top of that gray that I just put in. And we're just adding a little bit of depth to the color here. It should look like it fades from gray to kind of an olive or brownish. And then we're going to put a black stripe down the, the top of it as well. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We're going to grab the other marker. One little tip that I just barely learned because I am very slow on the uptake with this kind of stuff. One side of the marker is fine, one side is thick and I didn't even realize there's nothing that says thick or thin but look at this. If you're using Prismacolors the thick band is where the thick one is and the thin band is where the thin one is. I didn't know that. Took me this long to figure it out. Thanks for all of you guys. Thanks to all you guys for telling me. Did you know that, Brigham? <laughs> no, dude. Yeah. That makes so much more. Yeah, how many times have you opened up the wrong side? Huh. How, like 50% of the time. I'm saving people time and effort at the vice. Whoa. Brigham's mind's blown. Blown. Brown. He has a Boston Red Sox hat on him. I don't know what to think. Sorry. Um, all right. Black is the final color, so as you can see now, we've got like dirt McGirt. That is just filthy right there. All right, now let's work on the undercarriage. We're gonna paint him a little yellowish. What do we call this one? Yellow ochre? I just call it yellow. So anyway, here we go. We're gonna lighten up the, the underside, grab my light colored fingers, give it a preen, and I think I'm going to add a little bit of orange. You can really go to art class on these, but um, who knows how much difference it'll make. It's just fun to do. And then uh, to top it all off, I'm going to brush that out one more time that we got all that color in there. See how good we're looking. Yeah, that's, that's pretty dirty right there. Dirty as Brigham's old mustache, I'll tell you that right now. So what I'm going to do is take a fine Sharpie and I'm going to create some gill plate lines and just lightly color those in place. It just should be just like a faint outline like that. And then everybody knows that shad have a big black spot on each side. So we're going to come up here and we're going to make a black spot just like that. So when it swims it's going to have all that cool detail. On the back half of the fly you've got the sexy shad colors but this is a fly you can really do lots of colors with. Here's one it's not a crawfish pattern but I did it kind of in crawfish colors but you could fish this one as a perch or as a bluegill, as a crawfish, you know, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, this has been a cool fly to play with. It's a real simple one, pretty much just three materials. I mean, don't count my materials on there because there are different colors of marabou. I understand that. Right, Brig? And two different sizes of squish now. Don't agree with them, oh, okay? You're on oh, my team here. Three materials. Gosh, okay. Count them up. Tell me how many materials there are. Anyway, like and subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching.